What is the first thing a burglar does before he enters a home? What is the first thing thieves do before they break in? What are they thinking about? Are they thinking about the loot? Are they thinking about how they're going to open the doors unnoticed? What is it? What is the first thought any robber, burglar, thief, swindler or scammer is thinking about when they plan to do their crime? The first question they ponder upon is how do I escape? That is the first question any thief, swindler, scam artist, robber, burglar thinks about. They don't think about what they want to steal or what they want to get from you through a scam. They think about how they get out. Just think about it for a moment. Let's say you have three burglars. They decide they're going to enter a house to loot it. The house has many golden objects, which they can sell on the black market. One of the burglars stole something of gold before, and he sold it on the black market for 2,000 pounds. So he knows where to go with stolen items to sell them. So let's say there, there are two burglars. They decide we're entering that house. They have their bags with them. They have their cover so nobody sees their face. They have the hammer and the iron tools to they have the iron tools to make sure that they can force the locks. They even purchased boots that are common so nobody can trace their footprints to the type of shoes they're wearing. They thought about a lot of practical stuff. So they break into the house. And in that house, when they succeeded in getting what they wanted, now one of them says, oh crap, how do we get out with all of these things? The other says, well, we'll figure that out. But then when they leave the house, they realize that, oh, there are three police stations nearby. And the shortest road out of there has many houses with security cameras. So they figured out that they were stuck. Any way they went, they would be caught. So they trapped themselves. They trapped themselves in a very bad situation. They can put back all the things they robbed. They can do that, but then they still need to find a way to escape. To enter into the situation was very easy, but to escape, they don't know how to do it. There is no criminal out there that wants to find themselves in such a situation. So the first question they ponder on is how do I escape? Because opportunity is everything to criminals. If there's a lot of loot, but there's no opportunity to do it unharmed, in the sense that there, if there's no way to do it without getting harmed, or if there's no way to get away from the crime scene with the least losses, they will not do it. So if you have a house with very expensive goods, but it will cost them too much to escape after robbing your house, they will not rob your house. No matter how attractive your house is, even if you leave your door wide open, they can just walk in and take everything away. They will not do it. 
Now, what is this message about? It's about opportunity. I used criminals as a parable. In daily life, evil spirits seek opportunities to get a hold on the human population. They use human beings as tools, but it's the evil spirits behind the scenes that are doing things. The human beings that are being used are often not even aware evil spirits are using them. And that's also an opportunity evil spirits have, the opportunity to use those people. So the evil spirits take advantage of the defects and the function of those people to use them. And with those people that they use as tools, they want to influence circumstances to such an extent that they have an upper hand, especially on believers. So understand this. When you walk by faith, you walk in the armor of God with full attention to what the Holy Spirit is telling you. No demon in his right mind would even try to hinder you, nor to cause and disturbance your way. They will not. Because there is no opportunity for it. Now they will conduct operations to get your focus off of Christ. That is what they will do. But while you are focused on Christ, walking full in the power, no evil spirit in the right mind would even try to rob you. Let's bring to the human realm. No negative-minded human being would even dare to even be a mile near you when you fully walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you're not walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, but you only call Christ's name, then now evil spirits have a full opportunity to take advantage of you, as well as reprobate human beings. So it all depends on the opportunity that's at hand. You cannot prevent someone from having negative expectations. You can't prevent someone from holding on to negativity. You can't make someone leave the dark side. So if they choose to have a negative view and to act on it, that's not your fault. It's not you can do about that. But what you can do and should do is limit the opportunities reprobates and worldly people have to work against you. you. You should limit their opportunities. How do you do that? By walking by faith. You do that by decreeing and declaring. When you send peace ahead of you, you've shut down opportunities for violence against you. If you send peace ahead of you before you go to work, You've shut down any type of contention against you. And if there was a plot to set you up to be arrested or to be killed at the workplace, because such things happen out there, and you send peace ahead of you, it can be that suddenly the boss doesn't want you to come to work today. Or on your way to work, suddenly some colleagues don't, or don't make it to work. Why? You sent peace ahead of you. And by you sending peace ahead of you, you have taken away the opportunity for evil to unfold. You didn't force people to do what's right because you can't make them do what's right. You didn't beg them to do what's right. You didn't do anything by your own finite strength. You used to the backup from the Holy Spirit and with that backup, you forced peace ahead of you. So you didn't give anyone the option whether or not they want to comply with safety and with things in your favor. You, you've enforced it. And by you enforcing it, you've shut down any option for anyone to unload anything negative against you or against anyone else in the environment for that sake. You took away the opportunity for evil to unfold itself. And that is what believers ought to do. When you purchase a bike, you often purchase a lock. By you using a lock, you reduce the ability of thieves to rob your bike, to mean to steal your bike. 
because if you leave your bike without a lock, anyone can pick it up and take it with them. But when you put a lock on it, it becomes more difficult. Now they can break locks, but at least you've made it difficult for them by reducing the opportunity for them to steal your bike. In the world, they use this practical understanding. Reduce opportunities. When those opportunities can be used against you. Now, this message is not to provoke you to be a control freak. Absolutely not. Just realize that even though you cannot prevent people from doing what they are about to do, you can shut down any opportunity for them to do what they want to do. If what they want to do goes against Christ or worse, if it goes against the safety of the environment. We should, as believers, both collectively as well as individually, shut down opportunities for evil to unfold itself. We shouldn't be in a daily routine that we're not even aware of what's going on around us. And then when bad stuff happens, it overtakes us by surprise. No, we should shut down opportunities for evil to manifest itself. Now, evil will manifest itself anyway because you still have evil people walking around and you still have many enablers in the world who don't follow Christ. That's not our fault. That's not on us. But what is on us is how far we allow them to go. How many opportunities do we keep giving demons to express themselves? Now, you're not responsible for what demons are doing because they're damned anyway. You're not responsible for how human beings relate to the gospel. You're not responsible when people choose to put up with darkness. It's not you. But what you are responsible for is how you deal with the situation in a constructive, Christ-centered manner. You should, as far as it depends on you, shut down opportunities for evil to manifest itself. Don't you realize that in the world, there are some people who have this understanding. They're not even spiritual. They don't even know Christ. They're not even pagan. When they see that a, a, a husband and a wife, let's say a couple, are arguing a lot, and that the husband is screaming often, one day, one of the neighbors may call the cops, and they may inform the cops, the husband's often screaming there, and the wife is crying. And what happens? Police comes, they find out it's a domestic violence situation, and it stopped. Next time, the husband knows I need to look for help when I have anger issues. I'm not going to pour it on my wife. What happened here? Someone, by reporting the incident to the police, they shut down an opportunity for evil to manifest itself. Or let's say that you have a neighborhood where there is a lot of child abuse going on and someone conducts a campaign against child abuse. Now you have men of those wounded children who find help and they recover in their teenage years from what happened to them. Because if that would have happened, many of them would either have become strongholds for demons or they would have been drawn to the dark side. So by providing help to those children, you have shut down many future murders, rapes, vandalism, and societal harm. You've shut it all down by making the decision to be constructive with the situation. So even in the world, they have this basic understanding. So believers should not lack in it. Well, that's it for now. Keep up with Christ and wherever possible, as far as it depends on you, shut down any opportunity for evil to manifest itself. Not by your own strength, by physically intervening in every situation, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be at peace.